My name is Laura Ingwell and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Entomology at Purdue. Uh, I specialize in insect pest management and horticultural crops and I'm here today to talk to you about pest management in a newly emerging crop in Indiana, hemp. One of the current and a very abundant pests that we know attack hemp is the corn earworm. It's something that we're very familiar with here in Indiana because we grow a lot of corn and we've done a lot of research on how to manage this pest effectively in sweet corn. One of the tools that we use in corn earworm management is a monitoring system. So what I have next to me here is what we call a heart stack trap. It's what we use to monitor the flight of the adult moths of this insect pest. We have a pheromone lure that we place inside of the trap that lure smells like a female moth and attracts male moths into this trap when they're looking for a mate. And they get caught in the cylinder at the top here. And so while we know that this pest is damaging in hemp because we have found the caterpillars feeding on the developing seed heads, so it's particularly problematic in CBD related hemp production, we don't yet have a very good understanding of the economic threshold or the number of moths that we may be catching and when we need to do some sort of intervention in our crop to protect it. So at this point, we have deployed these traps throughout the state in hemp and we're beginning to understand just the movement within the crop. Um, we can also identify the most vulnerable time of that crop. So it's when they begin to flower and set seed. What you're really needing to protect is that seed production. So by watching our trap counts and identifying when we're finding high numbers of moths and that vulnerable time in our crop when we're beginning to flower, we can then make more informed decisions about the types of management strategies that we can employ to protect that crop. Purdue Entomology and the Purdue Hemp Program have partnered with the Office of the Indiana State Chemist to work to attain some 24C labels for pesticides that are safe to use in hemp, particularly targeting corn earworm, as we have identified this as a problematic pest. The two insecticides that are available are both biological insecticides. One of them is Bacillus thuringiensis, or Bt, which is a bacteria that we spray on the plant. The other one is an insecticidal virus, which we can just call NPV. So it's really important to consider how biological pesticides work and what the expectations can be for control when using this um, management strategy. So the most important thing to understand is that the insect is most vulnerable when it is very young and that this product will be placed on the plant tissues and the insects themselves have to consume the product in order to ingest it and then become infected with either the bacteria or the virus um, in order for it to be efficacious to actually kill the, the insect. So in combination with monitoring when we're seeing high numbers of adults, understanding that that correlates to females laying eggs and that that product needs to be on the plant when those eggs hatch, we know that within two days of moth counts, you need to get that product down and protect those plant parts. Another important thing to consider is the way in which you apply these pesticides. So some of them are hard to dissolve, so you need to make sure um, that you're using large enough filters, that you're not straining out the particles themselves that you want to get on the plant. And a lot of them are much more efficacious if you apply them in very high volume, because it's really important to get really good coverage on the plant so that when those eggs hatch, the first few bites that those young caterpillars take are uh, them ingesting the pesticide itself. So the key things to understand is timing is crucial. As young as the caterpillars are, as soon as you can get it on the plant to protect it, that's important. Understanding that that insect does need to consume some plant material to become infected by this, um, the biological insecticides. And then understanding that there's some lag time too for that pesticide, the biological organisms to replicate within the insect and, and kill them. Um, so those are really key things to consider and having expectations that will meet that in terms of control.